Today in the Media Freak Show, episode 1, the 6th of Friday, I'm Jacob Lopez over here presenting you Mojo Camera. And today is the greatest day for you to see this great premiere whose witch is coming today and tonight. We have a great, great, great episode, like I already said. I don't want to repeat myself. For well, and I'm Jacob Lopez, and this is Media Freak. Hi everybody, you know everybody just heard me, but well It's a great honor to have you back over here in my house in my editing base. I mean my computer What else? My, my camera is now occupied, so that's why I'm doing it behind the scenes Yeah Well as you know today's topic is about multiple camera and well multiple camera is about many things well I think so. Just to explain a little bit about multi camera, multi camera is when when we have one, we have two or more. We'll be here in this diagram. We have four, four cameras pointing or directing to two objects or one object, which we're gonna be reviewing in this video. But this is object A object B so we're getting four angles in this diagram four angles in the video we're getting two angles but multi camera is mostly focused in what we can say about kind of like switcher like being a switcher in a show when you're using this program in the way I'm gonna be introducing to you in this video about Sony Vegas Pro it's kind of like that using a switcher but it's on demand not live or pressing buttons only switching if you only get me well Hi everybody, welcome to the first episode of Media Freak over here. And as you see here is a beautiful, you know, capture here, which we have over here in our front row here. With uh, my symphony rolling through the skies over here and... Uh, isn't that great? Great effect. Uh, then you're gonna, oh, you did it. No, uh, it's just in a... A transition from Sony Vegas Pro 11. Isn't that cool? Oh well, let's gonna show you how to achieve this effect, which I wanna talk about today. The switching. Then we're gonna go crazy over here in this part with a bunch of cuts, which I did here. Isn't that cool? So well, uh, and this is well. You're gonna say, "Hey, this looks complicated, eh?" This is in course. I want to save this project. It's the best I've ever done. So we save, and we're gonna start our project as H uh, HD, high definition, 10 by 80, 60 frames. It's released. Oh, well, we're gonna import our pro our media files here. Yep, I love this. I love when I'm I'm importing my my files. And so here we are. We have it here. And so normally for the first channel, what you're gonna do is import your first channel, which is the camera with the audio. So well. Uh, for the synchronized purpose and for the heck of the purpose, I selected this um, thing which is clapboard. I got it from Wikipedia definition. The device is used in filmmaking and video production to assist in synchronizing of picture and sound and to design and mark 
particular scenes and takes recorded during, uh, during a production which is called the sharp clap noise that the clapper makes can be identified easily on the easily on the audio track which is this or the and it normally looks like this. It's beautiful. I love it. It's one of my favorites. So well, let's get it with the production. You see here, low budget. What else? What I can do. And so, as you see here, over here we got our claps, which we have here. If we didn't synchronize this, how would it sign, uh, sound? So, hear it. Out of control. So, to synchronize this, we use our instance. Instance, I mean. We just... Uh, okay. We just synchronize this. And just make it sure that is uh, at the same pace. You see this? It goes at the same pace. So uh, after that, you got your only only option to um, do whatever it takes to fix your production quality. And so at the same moment that you're having your production already cut, I want to show you something which is really important in production quality. Okay, when you when you have when you have your your video file, your two video sources, which I call. You see over here that your video sources look great, yeah. But at the moment you're saying, "Oh, where I start doing the switching and everything, I got my two video sources." Okay. Before that, we delete this track which is the audio track from the second camera. We already, we already got we already got our video synced over here in our second channel. We we can see it if we only solo it. Okay. To do this syncing link, which Final, uh, which um, Sony Vegas Pro and Final Cut Pro X already integrated into their program. I love it. Go. C tree R A C tree R I mean create sync link which is over here. I'm gonna show you all. Gosh, uh, it's not coming up. Ugh, ugh. Okay, you're gonna find the option over here down below. Sync link and what wherever you move it, it follows it. You see? It's better like that. So uh, apart from that, now we go to tools, multi camera, create multi camera tracking. Oh, uh, track I mean, not tracking. Forget about that. Now you go to tools, multi camera, enable multi camera editing. What it did with multi camera track is that it united, it united the two video sources to one. So uh. Now to start video. Uh, now to now to start to create our moto camera shots. We press play. Let's lower that. I'm looking at the camera, so just because I feel like it, let's go to camera number two. And you see over here, it does a cut. You can go at the pace of the music if you only click fast.
Okay. Now you're gonna say, hey, I refinish. This unchecked multi camera editing. And so, here's your shots. Okay, and for those over there, those people who are gonna comment or dislike my video because I didn't tell them to do transitions, if you only stretch out the first channel video, which is this one, on the cut, you can do this. It overlays it and it does a crossfade. But if you go to the tab over here, which is transitions, you can go to um, the Sony. You can do a clock, a clock wipe, like sometimes we can see in Star Wars movies, which I'm, I'm a fan of it. So well, you can do that, and a bunch of other stuff. Well, well, apart from that, you can apply other effects there. But to apply a track effect to the whole video. It's this. I know normally people know this, but I want to just talk about it. We are going to apply color corrector. Sony color corrector. Sony color curves. And there we have it. Okay, we got our footage here. We're going to switch to over here. We're going to put our lows to yellow. I think so. I love it. Green. Oh. Green. Uh, it all it all depends on the scent. You know, it all depends on what type of scene you want to develop here. I'm just gonna randomly, really fast, just color correct this. Even though it doesn't look good, but anyways, it's the only thing. We just gave some light to it. We go to color curves. One bit. Put a little bit down. Put it up. Go to red channel. A little bit high. Cool. Well, this is all about playing around. We're gonna put this type of filter, which is called um, Sony's Cookie Cutter, which is a circle, and we're gonna unsize it. Like size it over here this time. We're gonna feather it. Feather it, and so the bigger it is, the better it is. I wish I could. I can do more. Cut away. Oh, <laughs> I just missed the LD. So, anyways, you see, this is amazing. Practically, almost the same thing that I did in the last project that you saw when I just entered. Oh well, anyways, you can do a lot of stuff here in Sony Vegas Pro, and this is just a beginner. You know, this is something that a beginner should already know, according to my fact, or my, you know, my thinking quality. If those schools, you know, uh, film schools, they have the ability to show beginners at the first week how to do multi-camera work, I tell you, they're going to be boosting up with editing, but... Not everybody can have the ability to do uh, moto camera work from day one. So, well, it's all about patience and having experience for the program. I'm so glad to have you today here in Media Freak, and this is our new, our first episode, not new episode. Be waiting for our second episode, which is gonna be talking about exactly about color corrector and color curves too. Color corrector, which is uh, a really good plugin. And I'm going to be bringing up some third-party plugins from Magic Bullet and some other friends out there. So, well, this is Jacob Lopez of Film Geek, and I will see you next time on our next episode of Media Freak.